I expect us to have a really good team this year. I expect us to make some, make some runs. I expect us to be a team that people don't want to play. Most influential people in the sport, talking about the sport globally. On this episode of Big Noon Conversations, I talk with Matt Rule, the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Matt Rule, head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Uh, appreciate me. your time. Um, started off every uh, conversation just like this. What's the best part about being the head coach in Nebraska? Um, I'd say uh, living in Nebraska. You know, that might, that might shock people you know, across the country, but it's, uh, it's probably, I've lived a lot of places, probably the best group of people I've ever been around. Um, like a hardworking, a population of people that you know love Nebraska football. So if you're a football guy, I can't think of a better place to live in the country than in Nebraska. I, I mean, I'll attest to that. I know I'm, I, I played at Colorado, but having to play Nebraska in Lincoln twice during my career, I tell you what always shocked me so much is, and this is as unique and weird a feeling as you'll get, is that we you had to warm up in front of 90,000 because they're in their seats like an hour before the game. That's right. I'm warming up and I'm like, this this is wild. It, it created a really uneasy feeling <laughs> having all those people watch the warmups. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's not just a love of football. I think that's a love of all the players. I'm, I've heard a couple of people say like, hey, we come to support everybody from the first warm up to, to the last snap of the game, no matter what the score is, we're gonna, we're gonna watch the Huskers. And so my, my first time, my first home, it was my first home game and sitting out there and Isaac Giffords, our senior free safety, and I'm sitting there doing warm-ups, like blown away by the amount of people there. And he looked at me, he goes, Coach, this never gets old, man. And he's, you know, he's a senior, he's a, yeah. he's a Husker, and uh, he was right. Well, it's an exciting time around your program uh, right now. And um, I personally think that you guys are gonna be a really good football team th this next fall, but it's even more than that. It's, it's you getting there, it's your second year, uh, the optimism around the program, in particular a program that is, you know, and maybe this is too strong a word, but that fan base desperate for the return of, of the Huskers, you, you know. What do you feel about that excitement and that momentum? Well, I, I, think, I think the word desperate is, is not a bad word. I think that's exactly the right word, Joel, because um, people, people love their team. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, being in Texas and being in a one school town, you know, like, yeah. I mean, they, they love that team. And, and I think the thing is for me coming from the Northeast, you know, coming from where all the places I've been, um, you get there and, and they've sold the crowd out for so long that maybe you take that for granted. And uh, immediately I didn't want to take that for granted. Mm. Immediately I wanted to return a product that people wanted to come see and, and were proud to see. And you start talking to people all across the state and they're telling you these memories of coming to games with, you know, their grandfather and their uncle. And, you know, these people were you know, working jobs or farming or ranching. And the only time they would make sure they could get off was to come watch those games. Yeah. And you're like, man, there's an unbelievable uh, importance to not just winning, but to doing things in a way that r r represents people in Nebraska. Sure. So if there's some optimism, I think it's that people, they kind of really relate to the way we've done things. They relate to the way that we've practiced. They've related to the way that, I mean, we played Minnesota last year. We lost again on a last second play. And I remember a couple of our kids started running right off the field to the locker room. And I was like, no, no, that's not how we do things. And we went over and shook their hand. We played Colorado. And the Fox people came up to me, or the game people came up to me and said, hey, they're gonna storm the field. And I said, no, we're gonna go over and shake Coach Sanders' hand. Like we wanna return, return this program to prominence, but we also have to bring a dignity and respect. Yeah. And I think that's what people are excited about. And then we've recruited pretty well and we've got some good players now. I was gonna say, and maybe that leads into what uh, I might ask you next, but what it excites you about not only this season, but what you're building and, and the, the momentum that you're creating. Yeah. When I, when I looked at Nebraska, I saw the facilities. Yeah. I saw the fan base. I saw the financial situation. I saw a school that had no debt. You know, one of the only, only, only Big Ten schools with no debt. Uh, and, and the age we're getting ready to move into, I thought, well, this place is uniquely positioned. I saw a history of excellence. My question was, can we recruit there? Sure. You know, like, you know, I had people telling me, like, hey, you know, it's in the middle of the country. It's going to be hard to recruit. Hey, why don't you wait for a job in Texas or Florida or something like that? And I kind of fell in love with the place, but that was always my question. So getting there and seeing, A, how, how cool of a town Lincoln is, how big of a city Omaha is, how much the football's pretty good in that area. There's a lot of Division I players coming out of that area. Um, 
and then saying that there's still a national pool and I still can wear this. I can still wear this to an airport in Florida and I'm going to get a go big red, I promise you. So we, have, we still have some pool. Now we have to play well, but we can, we can get players to come to Nebraska. We yeah. can get players who want to come play in those facilities. Um, and uh, so that's why I'm excited because we have a pretty good team. You know, I, how that, you know, I'm, I'm a coach. I'm not going to say too much, but uh, I think we have a pretty good team. I have like a kind of a quiet confidence when I walk around about where we're headed. Is it this year? I think it is. Is it the next year? Definitely. And so I'm really excited about that. How much of that confidence stems from, from your own history? Because you're a builder. You know, I've said this several times on this show uh, about you specifically. Um, and it's why, candidly, it, so many programs have been enamored with the thought of trying to get you in their program as their head coach, and Nebraska was able to do that. You did it at Temple. You did it at Baylor. Those are places that were not easy to do that. In particular, I know Baylor had won before you were there, but I think people forget what had happened yeah. there and what you actually took over um, after uh, uh, Coach Grobe was in there, and that was a difficult job. Yeah. So... My confidence level is in, is in you as a builder. Um, is that what you see? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. And I think, I think it's because our staff, uh, we, we, we are not afraid of failure. Uh, we are not afraid to go 2-10 and 10 our first year, 1-11 and 11 our first year. Everyone talks about building a culture, and you don't even know what that is sometimes. Well, to me, it's, <laughs> it's getting the best people possible and setting high standards for how you do things. And if that means that, hey, I'm gonna play the, the guys who will do things right early on, and we might not lose, or, or because you know we're trying to recruit freshmen, not take a quick fix, um, we're willing to go through that. You know, our bad year here was five and seven instead of two and 10, which was much better than two and 10. Thank, thank goodness, bro. <laughs> but I think once the players realize, like, hey, these guys are for real, man. Like, they're gonna, they, Coach Rule would rather lose than win by doing things the wrong way. And so we, we're going to buy into doing things the wrong way. And the staff, like, I've never fired a coach after a first year. Like, you know, we go 1-11, 2-10. Everyone thinks you're going to fire everybody. I'm like, what are we talking about? We did our best work this year. Yeah. And so in those triage years, we are setting the program up quietly to have long-term success. You know, Baylor, had, Baylor won a championship after we were gone with those same kids because they had been trained the right way. So I think that's that building. The first thing you do when you want to build a building is you do what? You got to dig and you got to yeah. go down. You yeah. have to actually go the wrong way to go the right way, and not everyone's willing to do that, especially nowadays with NIL and portal and all that. And, and yet, I mean, you, you, you say you know five and seven, and yeah, maybe from the outside that doesn't look like success. Okay, fine, fine. However, if you actually dig into your season and you watch it, and you see what you were to begin the season and what you were to end the season. The games that you were in, and more specifically, the ways that you lost those seven games, you got your turnover issue was inc wild, wild. Fifteen turnovers in, in, I think, five of your losses, <laughs> which, you know, that goes the other way, and it's not even just a five and seven season in a triage year. It's something much better, yeah. and you're going to a bowl game. That's why I have confidence moving forward. I'm like, boy. It's really small, these margins between what they did last year at five and seven and, and potentially a really good, solid year. Yeah, you know, I, I always love when Phil Steele's magazine comes out every year. And one of the things he uses to predict success the next year is usually close, close losses, losses lead, lead yeah. to close wins, and turnovers usually lead to turnarounds. Yeah. Like, it would, if we, let me tell you this right now, if we are, if we are minus 17 again this year, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be playing golf, okay? <laughs> they won't have me back as the coach, and they shouldn't. Like, because it was it was a phenomenon that just kind of built on itself, and so obviously I didn't do a good enough job, but we won't be that this year. Um, and again, that you talk about building, how do you do that? You, you I, I think you just don't panic. You go through that year and you say, okay, guys, listen, if we just fix a couple of things, we're going to be a really good team. And so, um, I, I, uh, I I know we'll be better on offense. We were really good on defense. Yes, we were pretty solid on special teams. You know, we don't take into account enough in the Big Ten the weather. People think it's, ah, whatever. No, no. there were games where it was 30, 40, 50 mile wind, hour winds in our face two quarters a game. And so I adapted as the year went on. I kind of really watched Coach Ferentz. I told him last night, you know, I know Nebraska and Iowa are idols, but I look up to Coach Ferentz and like how he played the field position game. And mm -hmm. so now we enter year two, we'll be better with the turnovers. We have a better idea how to win in the Big Ten. Uh, now the Big Ten's changed, but we'll have a better idea with most of the teams and how to win. And our players now, most importantly, 
you know, a lot of people don't transfer out of Nebraska. Most most of our guys want to stay and be a part of it. So we have a lot of guys who are there during those moments yeah. who will make who will make the different decisions this year so that we can win. I think you can make an argument that experience is, is really the currency that now college football is moving towards. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we can talk about NIL all we want. We can talk about transfer portal and all those things are important. And I'm not going to suggest that they're not. But when you see some of the teams that are now all of a sudden taking leaps and making – headway into the top echelons of the sport. Washington, veteran team, Michigan, national championship. That was a veteran football team. Now all of a sudden, here you guys are going to have five returning offensive linemen, most of your defense back. And I think you've recruited really well at the skilled position players and gotten some some guys out of the portal mm-hmm. at those those positions as, as well. When, when you look at the experience level and factor of your team, is, is that something that, that tips you in the direction of knowing like this this could be a year that's that's very good? Absolutely. I think, um, I think there's experience, and as we move forward in the college football playoff era, depth, you're going to be playing 17 yes. games. Yes, yes. So, you know, while an NFL team has a 53-man roster, there's unlimited transactions. So it might take 90 guys to have 53 men. For us, you know, uh, what's unique about us is I think we have like 19 returning starters. Mm. We also have 82 freshmen and sophomores. So we are. I remember t- talking about that before the Colorado game, and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait! Is that <laughs> yeah. is that number real?" It's wild. So we have these like really, and, and it was it was a blessing for us. Three of our best players, Ben Scott, Bryce Benhart, Isaac Gifford, all decided to come back, forgo the NFL. Ty Robinson, fully four guys that had draftable grades, decided yeah. to not go to the NFL. I, I told some of them, "I'm like, you should go to the NFL, bro. What are you doing?" And they're like, "No, I want to come back." And so I have this elite experience that's really talented, and also a bunch of really good young players. Mm-hmm that are watching them. So that's why I think we can win this year because of that experience. And then those young players are going to be experienced yeah. the following years. And that kind of is how, to me, you build something that eventually can hopefully make that jump to be in the college football playoff yeah. conversation. The nature of the sport is also changing in the structure of the sport. It's, I don't think, it's, it's not lost on me that the transfer portal and NIL have opened up access to the top echelons of the sport. You look at the four teams that have just competed for a national championship in the last couple of years. Three of them were TCU, Washington, and Michigan. Mm. We would have never said that six years ago. It was a Alabama, Clemson, that's what it was gonna be. Do you think that that college football is in a place where anybody is gonna have not only access, but can project themselves out to go up and potentially compete for a national championship? Yeah, I'd say no doubt. I think um, you even look at like uh, the top schools and where they're recruiting from and how it's changed over the last 10 years, mm-hmm. where it was very regional before. Now now you're recruiting nationally because you want to build a relationship. Maybe you get them then. Maybe when they go in the portal in two years, you get them then. And so you do, you do have access to a lot more players. You do have players. And I think as we move into the next era, whether it's revenue sharing or how it works, people are not going to have to just decide how much they want Joel Klatt. They're going to have to decide how much they want to pay Joel Klatt. Yeah. And so, you know, a young man's going to look at an opportunity where I can go there for, you know, 20000 I can go there for 70000 And so, you know, really roster makeup and the decisions you make, with, if it's a similar pot, it, it's going to be really, really interesting. And it does open up access, and it does bring about parity. You know, the NFL is the, 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 the most parity-driven league that there is. And so um, I, think all that's, uh, I think all that's going to give a lot of people opportunities. And you know, I think the one thing that, that I always think about, and kind of what I said earlier about, you know, playing a 17-game season, is there's more access now to the college football playoff. It's not as much about getting to the college football playoff. I mean, it is for us right now. I'm saying for the teams that have been there, it's about building a team that can win it, that can get hot and win at the end of the year, that has enough depth, that has, that has playmakers that are healthy at the end of the year. So roster makeup is going to be more important now, in my opinion, than ever before. And... Uh, uh, we're trying to take our experience from the NFL and yeah. try to try to take that to college and hope that it works. Yeah, I mean your your roster. A lot of the excitement is going to center around signing a, a five-star quarterback. Uh, you know, so here comes Rayola, and tell us about what it's been like to not only land him, which was you know he was the number one recruit in the country uh, in a lot of publications, uh, but also what it's meant to your your team when you watch him practice and and. Uh, what it could be for you for, for your offense? Yeah, I mean Dylan's uh, talent is is only matched by his by who he is as a person. You know, I mean his family. You know, obviously, you know his father was yeah. a great Husker. Um, father played you know 14 years in the NFL as an offensive lineman, the most unselfish position that there is, and uh, as a center. You know, um, a great great mom, great sister, great younger brothers. Uh, his uncles are offensive line coach, 
And so the great thing for us was in recruiting, you know that he came because he knew what the, the program was really like yeah. on the inside. Yeah. That sends a message to everybody else in recruiting that, hey, this is a good place. The guy actually really, I was going to go somewhere else. I know what's happening here. You should trust that you should come here. Yeah. I think the second part of it is, so, so now, you're, now you're attracting players from all across the country that want to come play with him. But at the end of the day, to your point, it comes down to the football. And, um, you know, he has a unique feel for the game. He's really, really smart. You know, you always hear Tom Brady and those guys talk about when your best players work the hardest, yeah. you have a great team. Yeah. Well, well, Dylan, Dylan's one of those guys who tries to work the hardest. And so, um, you know, people talk a lot about turnovers last year, which we should. I'd go back and say if we can throw the ball better, you know, if we can complete third and five, if we can, you know, if we're not throwing, you know, interceptions, if we can be more aggressive because we trust our decision making. And so that's been one of the challenges for Dylan. That's been one of the challenge, challenges for Danny and for Heinrich. Um, you know, everyone wants to know who the starting quarterback is going to be in Nebraska. I'm always like, hey, it's going to take probably two, maybe three in this 17 game seasons that, that we want to have. Um, and so he, he certainly has helped us raise the level of play. And I think he's going to be a guy that all of college football knows. Um, do you have benchmarks in your head, having done this before at Temple and Baylor and knowing what it, it was like? And, and to be fair, though, the structure of the game is so much different now than it was, you know, because you didn't build Baylor and Temple with NIL and transfer no, portal, no. you know, as part of college football. Right. But even with that, just as a coach, you, you've got a feel for, for how it's going. Do you have benchmarks? Yeah, I just expect us to make a, a massive jump from year one to year two, and I expect our best jump to be from year two to year three. You know, I think like, I think you go from playing losing football to winning football, winning football to championship football. Um, the question I've said the whole time since I've been at Nebraska to our guys is, you know, make year two, year one, make year three, year two. Like, let's not go through the two and ten. Let's not let's not fight and or why are we doing this? Just buy into it and do it. And, and in many ways, last year was like a, a second year for me. Mm. Um, so I expect us to have a really good team this year. I expect us to make some make some runs. I expect us to be a team that people don't want to play. And so um, now, as we look at you know college football now, you know I, I always want us to to win a bowl game. I want us to be in the conference title race, and I want us to fight to go play in the college football playoff and then win it. Yeah. And so where we are there, why, I, I mean, I certainly expect us to be a bowl eligible team. Can we be a team that challenges to go play in the college football playoff? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I think if we weren't minus 17, if all of a sudden that was plus seven, we, we might we might make some noise. And so, you know, that's really my challenge to the guys is like, hey, let let's 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 fix the turnover issue. Let's get really good on offense to match our defense, and then then we'll go play. We'll see what happens. I I, I mean, and granted, I grew up as a rival to Nebraska. I cannot imagine what your fan base would be like if you put together a season where you were in the race for the CFP in November. Like, Memorial Stadium would, I just, I've played there. I know, I know, I, I felt it there, even when it, was, when it was good. I know what that feels like. I can't imagine what your fan base would, would be like. Well, I, I, here's what I'll say, here's my confidence level. That, that's gonna happen. It's, whether it's this year, the next year, you know, what, what year it's gonna be. Um, but my, the thing that I always go back to, again, just trying to be a very grateful person is, they deserve that because they've shown up when we're when Lanes. we're three and nine. They've shown up when we're four and eight. Like we were zero and two this year. You know, we lost to Minnesota and lost to Colorado. And you know, I'm I'm still down about those two games. I'm trying to be very focused on what's next. And I show up to the game, and it's like the inspiration you felt from that crowd for for a Northern Illinois game, night game. They were there for the entire warm up, <laughs> and you were like, man, we we better put together a good team. Like all these little kids running around. There's five thousand little kids that like want to shake your hand as you're walking out to the field. Like. They need to grow up. The best parts of the game can't be meeting the players. Yeah. It's got to be championship caliber football. So that will happen. It's, to me, it's a matter of when. And um, I sure hope it's this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of us that think that it, it could happen mm. um, uh, this year. Um, that Colorado-Nebraska game, uh, you mentioned it from, from a year ago. Now it's going to be in your place. And with, with everything surrounding their program, because, man, there's – there's a lot of energy, obviously, at Colorado and a lot of eyeballs on Colorado, you know, and that's obviously what Coach Prime has, has brought there. But now all of a sudden that that game is a monster, you know, almost like it used to be when Colorado and Nebraska would play Friday after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and it would be for for the division or for the Big Eight, you know, right to go to the Orange Bowl. That's right. how I grew up yep. with it. You know, I mean, it was it was a classic. And for the first time in a long time, it feels like 
Both programs have high expectations, and that game early in the season is a monster game. Yeah, uh, it's, um, you know, I think the one thing that we always have to re remember when we, th when we talk about Colorado is how great Shador is. You know, he's, he is um, one of the best football players I've ever coached against. And, you know, we blitzed him. I think we sacked him like 10 times. And we hit him a ton. And he stood in there. And so, you know, I know everyone sees, you know, Shador on commercials. They see him. You know, they see the swagger that he plays with. But he, he's an unbelievable competitor. And he's tough. And so, to me, you take, you know, Shador. You take, you know, Travis Hunter. You take all the players that they have. You take, obviously, Coach Sanders. You know, they're going to come into our place. They're a really good football team with, with dynamic players that you have to compete with. I mean, how, how good is it? for like that part of the country to have this game and yeah. have, their, have it be national TV at night. Like, how good is it for the game of football? Like, I, don't, I just don't want football to become like, you know, this area of the country, this area of the country. I want it to be from coast to coast. Yeah. You know, I want all 50 states. And what, 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 what Dion has done, in my opinion, is he's made football relevant to maybe people that weren't watching it. And so it's our chance to, to, to kind of come into that game and people are going to tune in to see them. Yeah. And they'll have a chance to watch us too. And if we play well, maybe people will have that same energy about us nationally that they have about them. Um, last thing I want to kind of chat about is, is I think that experiences in life are, are how we grow uh, in a lot of ways. I've, I've grown the most in my life, both, both personally and professionally, and even going back when I was a player through failure. Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn at Carolina and, and in your experience in the NFL? You know, I'd say I learned a lot. I'd say I learned a lot of things. I would not be able to be the head coach of Nebraska had I gone through that. Um, every decision you make is magnified in Nebraska ten times over. And if you're not really confident in who you are, I could see it really affecting you. I could see you, you know, compromising. You know, I have such a different relationship with our players now. I, I, when I'm able to tell them, because you know, this generation is so concerned with how people see them. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, you know, I've been I've been national coach of the year. You know, I've been I've been you know oh hopefully we can have him be our coach. I've been a meme and laughed at on Sports Center. You know, and as Roger Kipling says, you know, if you if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same. And so I've been able to teach my own kids that. Um, you know, when I go out there now and the crowd's cheering, I've also had. 50,000, 70,000 people in Panther Stadium uh, screaming to fire me. And what I learned through all of that is, man, I, I just want to make it about my players. I just, it's not about me. It, coaches say that, but they mean it is about them. It's really not about me. Like, I came back to college football because I knew young people needed coaches that cared about them, coaches that don't want to throw them away, coaches that don't want to give up on them, coaches that want to make an environment where they can be safe to have failures but grow. And if... If I learned anything during that time there, it was it was Christian McCaffrey, Brian Byrne, all these amazing players I had a chance to coach. They're just people. And, you know, I, you see them as superstars, but they're just people. And so I lost a little bit of that during COVID. One, one of the worst things I did is early on there, you know, you go in to be a head coach, you don't know anybody, COVID hits. And then when it kind of came back, I didn't connect enough. And then my last year, I made did an amazing job, I think, of connecting with a lot of those players. And they battled for me to the very end. But... I come back to college now and I'm like, it's all about human connection. Cause, cause the portal and everyone will tell you like, don't, oh, it's just a business. It's not a business. It's not, it's, it's college football. These players, they need a coach that believes in them. Bad teams need a good coach. You know, there, there's so many things that I learned in my time in Carolina, but if anything, it was have connections with the players and you know what, lead them through good times and bad. Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't just worry about, am I doing the right thing for our guys to win? And so, those experiences, uh, I'm so grateful for them. I'm so grateful that I went to Carolina. I'm so grateful for what it did for my family because we are so much closer now. Um, I'm so much closer with my players now. And that's why I believe Nebraska will win. And you know what? We'll win and people will be like, Coach, are you going to go here? Are you going to go there? Da, 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 da. And no, <laughs> I love Nebraska. And I love the people there. And I love my players because for the first time, they're not the players. They're my players. And I love these guys. Um, and just that time in Carolina maybe re reborn that to me. And that's why I'm so happy to be back in college football. I think this is the first time in my life that I've ever wanted to, to, to be a Husker after that speech <laughs> right there. <laughs> Bro, we could use you. We honestly could use you. <laughs> no, you're, you're in better hands at that position than you would be with me. Hey, man, I, I, I appreciate your time. Can't wait to cover you this year. Um, sure. Hopefully we get you at least a, a, 
a couple of times, hopefully even more. Yes, uh, it means you're winning games, That's by right. the way, if, That's if, right. if you see us coming in. Always love coming to Lincoln. Uh, appreciate and, and have a um, uh, deep respect for your fan base and, and your place. And college football will be better. I'll, I'll just go with the affirmation of will be better when you guys are, are again, one of the powerful programs and premium programs in the country. It just, it just will. Because of what you said about uh, regionality in the sport, we need someone carrying the water in the middle of the country. Well, let me say this. You guys probably won't want to use this, so you can cut it afterwards. But I appreciate what you guys have done for college football by Big Noon Fox and making that noon game um, probably one, probably the best window in sports. And, and I say that because at the time I was in the NFL. And I love, I'm still watching college football like crazy, right? And to me, um, we, we're going to grow this game by bringing it to people all across the country. And the way that you do it is uh, you bring excitement to the game, but you bring an integrity that I think is really, really important. You know, it's easy to sensationalize what's happening in college football and talk about all the bad stories and make it edgy. But you know that what we're doing is we're educating young people. We're coaching a lot of kids who aren't going to play in the NFL any day. So you know what, if they make a little bit of money while they're there to maybe start a business, maybe they don't have parents with a lot of money sometimes who can give them things in their, the next parts of their lives. So what we're doing in college football, about 90% of it's right. And you guys have brought an integrity that not everyone brings to covering sports. And so I'm, I'm grateful, which is why I was happy to come here and see you today. Yeah. All right. Listen. I appreciate sitting here talking, but we can't sit here and not hit a golf shot when we're staring at a golf course. So uh, what do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I got a 50 and a 56. We're good to go. <laughs> you gave me a little more club. Uh, you don't trust my swing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's... Is that going to be there? No, it's not. You just went the hole. Oh. You just went over. Beautiful. I'm there. Beautiful. On the green. Nice. Nice. Almost made it. I'm done. All right, all right, all right.